Welcome to Creative Tian Channel. Today we want to talk about the alternative for elastic when you are making a mask. I have a video about sewing a mask with filter pocket and nose wire with elastic. If you don't have elastic, we still have other choices. The first choice is to cut off some t-shirt or the jersey fabric. The jersey fabric is very stretchy, so when you pull it tight, it actually curves in and it acts like an elastic because the jersey fabric will not fray, so you don't need to finish with any sewing lines. Depending on different types of the t-shirt, some are more stretchy, some are less stretchy, so you can do a test. And instead of using this directly as an elastic, we can cut four pieces and sew the four ends so you can tie a knot that's comfortable for you. Here I cut up about one inch wide and 12 inch long and you will need four of them so you can tie it behind your ear. And if you want to tie it behind your head, you can get it longer, maybe around 16 inches. And if you need to adjust again, you can just untie the knot and tie a new knot. So with this method, you can still use my previous pattern. I will link in the corner of the video and in the description box below. The second choice is using a bias tape. In the store, it's probably difficult to find now, but we can make it at home easily. This is a double folded half inch bias tape. When it's folded, it's about half inch. And when you open it up, it's about two inches wide. And you can see there's a little gap in the middle. So that's the gap for folding over because of the thickness of the fabric. The bias tape just means it's cut on the 45 degree angle because when it's vertical or horizontal cut, you don't have much stretch and it doesn't have that drape. But if you cut it on a 45 degree angle, it has more give a little bit more stretchy and you'll be a nice edge. But for the mask sewing, the bias cut is not as important. And these are bias binding maker. They come in different sizes. You place your cut fabric here and pull it from the other side. And then you can iron from the other side. If you don't have a bias tape maker, you can just fold it and iron it by hand. Sometimes it's easier to do it by hand because you have more control of every little detail. And another way to make the closed tape is to use a serger. You can use the 45 degree bias cut or the straight cut and you can just fold it in half and serge on the outside So you can use this as a closed tie too, instead of elastic. And if you use a matching color thread, you will look nicer. Another alternative for the elastic is a hair tie. This is the longer one, and you can just cut it up to the size you need. If the elastic is a little bit short, you can always make the mask a little bit wider. So it will still behind your ear comfortably. I'm going to show you a very basic way to make bias tape. First, you cut a piece of cotton fabric into a rectangle or a square. I have a square here, 16 inch by 16 inches. The dimension is not as important as long as big enough for your need and it's small enough so you can handle easily with ruler and your scissor. And since I have a square, I know my corners are 90 degree. So when I fold in half, that will be the 45 degree. That's a 45 degree line. Or you can always use a ruler. Here they have a 45 degree line. That's this one. So when I place it near the corner, you can see that's the 45 degree line. And the next we are going to draw lines that's parallel to the 45 degrees line. Depends on how wide you want your bias tape to be. 
I have to open it up that will be one inch and then because two layer one in the front one in the back I will need uh, two inches so I'm going to draw lines every two inches and that's parallel to the 45 degree lines we have and I'm going to mark it with my fabric marker now I draw my marker I can fold it in half and just cut it out and the last piece is a small triangle so we don't need to use that I will cut out that part and then we'll cut out the 45 degree bias tape so that's all the pieces we are working with and you can see because the pattern of fabric has direction so if we place the fabric in the same direction the pattern will be like mirror image so for bias tape it's easier to pick a fabric without any direction when you want to connect to bias tape the important thing is the angle has to match and if one is like this it's not going to match so you find your match and then you fold it down you fold it down so the right side is facing each other and then we offset a little bit because we want to line up with the sewing line and not the edge so depends on the sewing line you will see bigger or smaller triangle on both sides and we will start from the intersection here to the other intersection there that's the sewing line and it can be small maybe quarter inch or big maybe half inch it's up to you so that's the line we saw and when we open up it's a continuous bias tape and we just need to open up the seam and iron it and trim off the extra if we cannot find the same direction of the angle then it might be like this then we can trim it to make it 45 degree angle so you will match and here again first we make sure it matches and we fold it so the right side is facing each other and we offset a little bit depends on your seam allowance and the sewing line will be here now we have a long bias tape I'm going to make it into double folded bias tape and I will show you both with the tape maker and uh, just by iron the first thing is to pick the right size this one's one inch tape maker and I have two inch wide fabric after I go through the tape maker it will be one inch and we want the right side to be on the bottom and the wrong side facing up and just feed it through the back you can use any sharp object push it from the slot in the middle just push forward and pull it out from the other side I'm going to show you how to do the double folded bias tape without the tape maker to me it's easier to control exactly where you want the fold to be especially around the bulky area sometimes it gets jammed with the bias tape maker so first we fold it in half and iron it and when you iron use the highest heat and the steam setting so the steam can really set up the fold quickly it saves a lot of time the next step is to open it up and then fold it in and leaving a little bit gap in the middle so it's a little bit lower than the center line and it's the same on the top just leave a little gap here so when we fold it over it doesn't get too bulky you leave a little space for folding so we just fold the top and button all the way and iron it again 
So I finished the ironing. You can see the top folding down, the button folding up, and then I fold it again. So that's a double folded bias tape. And when I fold it over, I leave a little bit space. So the button piece is a little bit wider, just a little bit. So it's easier to fold over. So that's the final of the bias tape. It's really not that hard to make. Sometimes it's hard to find the right size for the bias tape maker. And it's very easy just to fold it and iron it. The result is the same. So how do we use a bias tape for our mask pattern? We can use this to replace the elastic. All the pattern can stay the same. You still have the nose wire and the pocket for the filter. But instead of having the elastic, we can cut two long pieces of the bias tape, maybe 36 inches or longer. After everything is done, we can just place the bias tape, make sure the center aligns to the center of the mask. And we can just sew a line from the top all the way down. This area has a lot of folds, so it can be a little thick. So one way is to open up your double fold bias tape. And from one side, you can sew a line here first, and then fold it to the other side, and then sew the other line. That's just to make sure the stitch goes to both layers. And you can continue sewing a line, either the straight line or zigzag line, all the way to the end. And for the end, you can cut it flat, and then fold it in, and then fold back again, and just sew a few lines, maybe one on the top, one on the bottom, that will secure the end. Another choice is to just tie a knot around the end that will stop the fabric from fraying.